and welcome to the Kicks and Crotch podcast. So uh, these videos that are going up at the moment are much older videos from a different YouTube channel I have where we have split the podcasts apart. And so this is a brand new channel, but I'm putting up the other material, the older stuff that's been up for a while, just because I think it's right, it should live on this channel. And so it's all going to be going up. So you'll be seeing much different quality in audio and in um video as well on these uh, podcasts so i do apologize for that uh, but as you see it progressing you'll see things developing and the quality going up and the guests changing in and out uh, this is dedicated to uh, martial arts and to self-defense so the older material is going up at the moment as i say from the old channel but as that starts to change as we run out of that material or there's a big event happening such as deji versus Floyd Mayweather, the new stuff will go up as well. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this, even though it is an older quality and is back from when this podcast was actually part of a student group. But I hope you enjoy. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about um, the relationship between uh, self-defense, uh, movement and things like dance. So exercise um, classes in a way, uh, it's a it's a bit kind of, fluffy with that explanation but things like dance self-defense martial arts all all those kind of things and how they re, um, reflect into well-being which of course can deal with a load of different things from your weight to your mental um, health and state at the time um andrew has done a guest instructor class for the university group before um he does have his own style of dance, which I'll let him explain because I can never remember what it is. I kind of know, but I'm not entirely sure. So I'll let Andrew introduce himself and kind of do a little bit about himself as well. So I'll just hand over to you, Andrew. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, it's a variety of dances I teach, but it's all under the family of swing dance. So uh, from about 20s to early 60s, um, fairly energetic, a good way to keep fit. Um, and a good way to socialise. We can break down all the details once Adam starts shooting questions at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I mean, obviously, Andrew, you've done uh, some uh, self defence as well. So, um, in fact, I've taught you some self defence, um, and you've also done um, some bits up in um, in London with the guys up there and various other Bartitsu stuff because you're one of the only people that does a podcast for me that even knows what the hell Bartitsu is. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, would you say that um, things like um, dance by itself, Bartitsu by itself, um, general self-defense by itself, uh, general exercise by itself, do you think they are best in uh, in and on themselves or should it be a mix like oh tonight i think i'm going to do some dance or for yourself it's probably most nights doing some dance and then at the weekend i'm going to go off and do some uh, some stick fighting um or you know is it best in relation in terms of your own let's say general mental health and well-being just making you feel more with it how would you how would you would you intermingle them do you think it's just best to focus how would you think about it um well actually i mean the uh, dance and self-defense are really closely related and they support each other well so i think uh, if you want if you're interested in one it doesn't hurt to try the other uh sort of the histories of dance i mean as an example cap let's see if i can pronounce this right capoeira yep uh, yeah, brazilian right. Brazilian dance form, which was um, a martial art disguised as a dance because it was uh, developed by slaves who were, didn't want the masters to know they, they were planning to kick their asses. Um, yeah, <laughs> very much. Had, the, the ancient Germans had a uh, war dance. Um, I don't know too much about. Uh, I think the Spartans did. Mm. Um, and people like, let's see, um, Bruce Lee, champion oh, God, yeah. dancer. Um, yeah. Joe Louis, uh, tap dance, I think, and Jack Dempsey. I think Jack Dempsey tap danced as well. He did do um, something, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember, but there is a, a good crossover because you know where your body is. Uh, I mean, teaching people who do self-defense dance, they really do understand movement and how they can do their body. The main thing, of course, is remembering I'm dancing, so I don't hit my partner this time. Yeah. Um, and, of course, with dancing... You don't want to get into some sort of smoochy hold in your self-defense, although 
that may <laughs> put people off and distract them in a fight. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like maybe some of my old students have come to you and accidentally tried to throw someone. Um... <laughs> no, not yet. not yet. I did get slapped once in a dance many years ago. I have no idea why. The girl looked at me and went, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, yeah, and there's no, there's no, nothing bad in there. I didn't do anything. She just <laughs> suddenly went whack. It's like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a good way. It's a good yeah. way of, um, yeah, the crossover is good. I mean, a lot of mm. people have said their dancing improves if they've done martial arts. Their martial arts improve and self-defense improves if they've done dance because you do understand how to move your body. And you're aware of your body. What's amazing is if you say to some people, I mean, as an example, uh, one step is just a dance where you walk. And if you actually say that to people, just walk, they struggle. Mm. Um, it's, it's, they're not aware. It's, it's, it's very strange. They, it's suddenly they're thinking, oh, I'm going to do this, I've got to do this. They've seen too much shit on Come Dancing. And it's like, <laughs> just fucking walk. You know, that's fine. Walk. So that yeah. body awareness is very good. <coughs> yeah i mean i i get that that just i immediately think of some class of the self-defense as well because um especially with wrist locks and things like that the amount of times i tell people to stop thinking um yeah yeah stop thinking you're thinking is, is terrible yeah, yeah. You, just, you end up locking yourself up rather than doing anything to your opponent um yeah i always say it's easier to almost fall asleep when you're doing stuff because it, it just takes your mind off of it um yeah yeah and uh, i think one of the first things i actually said to you was oh you're a dancer great you'll be able to do, do the footwork um, so it, 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 there's definitely a correlation because as much as anything else, you're used to taking instruction. I think both ways. You're, you're very much... That makes a lot of difference, yeah. Um, I mean, with cutter or drill mm. or, or any, anything where you're repeating the movement, body, um, what's what call it, for, um, muscle memory. <laughs> it's the same sort of thing with dance. You just like, turn, off, turn off the brain, just repeat, 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 repeat until you've got it. Yeah. And you sort of maybe sort of self hypnotize or meditate while you're doing it as well it's very relaxing on that side yeah i mean i, th I think we, we've discussed this in the past that meditation is is not necessarily what you think of as sitting there going um it is when you're feeling your most at ease yourself so for you you potentially yeah. probably meditate when you're doing dance and i potentially do it when i'm doing some form of self-defense or martial arts because it's just what we're both used to and probably yeah feel the most relaxed doing because it's, it's very weird when you try and explain that to someone because if you're doing dance you're doing it very fast and things like that or if you're doing martial arts and you're in some kind of competition it's hard for someone that doesn't do those to think that that can be relaxing but of course if you're so used to it that it's just second nature your mind yeah. switched off you you're not thinking about it you're just reacting to it i um i saw a good description of meditation as the sort of thing where you look at the clock and think oh my god where did that time go that, so you could be painting or you could be making models or you could be just walking and then suddenly, boom, you've got an hour ago. So that, that, when you're doing that, you've meditated. You've just switched off and you've gone out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, great, great ways to meditate. Oh, yeah. And for some people, meditation in any way really does, like you say, switch the brain off. I've, I've done it for some people and ask them, oh, how long do you think you've been meditating? And they're like, oh, five minutes. And I'm like, it's been three quarters of an hour. And they just yeah. like, what the hell? What? Yeah. But yeah, um, so yeah, um, I, I would agree with you. I think um, mixing them up, especially in terms of your own well-being, your own mental state, I think is really helpful because as well as muscle memory and they complement each other, I think it's, um, well, you, you were saying before, it's a very social thing um, because it's, yeah. you can't really train in martial arts or self-defense without having someone with you because it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. I mean, okay, there's catters, but you still need people yeah. to help instruct you. Um, exactly. And the same as dance. Yes. Okay. There's, there's tap, but even with tap, you need instruction. It's, it's, there's always a social element, even, you know, a smaller club or bigger club. There's always some form of, of social element, which of course we are social creatures, you know, by, yeah. by virtue, even those of us as myself that are quite kind of lonerish and may feel good in our own company at some point, especially, I'm sure for most people during things like lockdown have just gone, oh God, where are other people? Because there's, there's putting yeah. yourself into kind of self-isolation well, and then there's uh, going, oh no, you must stay there. And it, yeah. There's, I mean, that's hit quite a few in my class. More than me, because I do it as a job as well, I could sort of switch off to a degree, but because yeah. that was, the whole aim was to go and have fun and it's gone. So 
there have been some good lockdown classes. Uh, Julie, my best friend, she's been teaching lots of solo dances like um, the Madison from the 60s and the dances which are called strolls and things like that. Um, so you can dance by yourself. I mean, just jiggling around the kitchen is just perfect. Put on whatever music you like, just jig around. But when it's partner dancing, yeah, it's, it's a social, very much a social thing. Um, I think a lot of people say in the early history of dance, prehistory of dance, mm. a lot of it would have been building community bonds. Yes. So you would have had, I mean, you, you have hunting dances. And if you look at some of the cave art where someone's dressed with the, like, the antlers and this, that and the other, they look like they're dancing. So maybe they're trying to mirror the animals to affect the animals. Um, work dances where you would have... Um, chain gangs or work gangs you've got someone beating a rhythm or shouting a rhythm and it, it's a, a bonding community thing so mm. it, it is a lot of the time yeah social social bonding uh, also in, in schools not so much now I know they were thinking of bringing back partner dancing but um, a good way of um, developing social confidence and I think that's been lacking a lot with partner dancing and again I think martial arts was good because, again, you are doing something with someone. But you would socialise with the opposite sex, which a lot of people aren't used to. Uh, mm. It's all quite scary, but it's completely natural. In the 30s, everyone danced really closely. All it was was dance. It didn't mean anything. Now, most people are like, oh, oh, you know, I've got to touch someone. Um, I also actually think... Different. And when I think of dancing as well, and I think some of the dances that you do, and because the older dancers as well, are actually quite good for those that are, um, and I may be absolutely wrong, you'll be able to correct me on this, and I may be absolutely wrong for anyone that is part of this community, and I apologise if I am, but those of the LGBTQ community who because society has said for so long there's a certain way of acting and things like that and that you know they're not like, to interact in certain ways and it's yeah. bullshit we know that's bullshit do what the fuck you want you know that's that's your life not yeah. theirs but i think in especially some of the older styles of dance men and women men dance together women and women that it's not that's that's never been frowned upon it's always been part of a yeah. form of Let, socialization I mean yeah, less, less so with partner dancing, although even then, if you go back to the American Civil War, the West, there were so many more men that uh, men dance with each other. Because yeah. Gauchos, uh, the re reason tango mm. um, evolved was gauchos. They were dancing with each other, um, mm. or occasionally prostitutes if they went into town. Um, and the reason you've got the little kicks and such like is the, the fucking great spurs. You don't want to rip <laughs> someone's yeah. legs, so you've got all that. Um, so, yeah, uh, divorcing sex and dance as well a lot of the time. It's, yes. it's, this is a community thing. This is a social thing. You should all be able to mix and dance, whatever. Yeah, uh, it doesn't, you it doesn't still do get people feeling a bit odd dancing with the same sex, but uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I, I suppose it's. I, I do, I do see it as one of those areas that has never. It's never formed itself. At least not on purpose. It's never formed itself into any prejudice it's just always been a certain way and society has kind of gone around it so it's like you say yeah. in certain circumstances men and men absolutely fine to dance together men and women it's never been it's never been something that, that changed it was just you know oh yeah you can do that here who the hell cares like it i, yeah. I quite like that about about dance because it's it, it's it's always been like you say far more about a community and anything else sodja you know it doesn't, it doesn't it, you know, yeah. care about I mean, it it makes people more confident as well. I mean, if you're dancing with someone, you get very close to your dance partners. Mm. Um, that can be like family. And it's really good for building social, social bonds and that side of things. Uh, yeah. I, when I first learned, I learned in the early 90s, pretty much everyone since then, and pretty much every friend I've got has been through dance mm. some way or other. It's got this amazing... Um, uh, circle of friends uh, and it is a healthy healthy way to get to know each other because um, you're just dancing you're moving you're exercising you're up in the endorphins um, you're listening to music I mean music itself I mean the, the therapy of the music just the rhythm can keep, put you into a trance state as well um, mm -hmm. all yeah. healthy all yeah. healthy yeah I mean I stand about that as well and that does lead back to the, I think the first point you made which was capoeira um, yeah, which 
is literally to a certain rhythm and it's it's yeah. um you know devastating martial arts kicks and and strikes in a in a dance and actually it's it's very strange because depending on um on who you talk to and even if you go to brazil and talk to people in the background depending on who you talk to some of them call it capoeira as a fighting technique some of them still call it a dance and as far yeah. as they're concerned, it is just a dance and nothing else. Yeah. And then to the martial artists, it's martial art. It's just more effective. And it is very strange. Yeah. But of course, it was always originally created to help because um, the, the Portuguese, who were the slave owners, basically erased all of the African culture. And you can't do it. Yes. And so yeah. they, Capoeira was a way of bringing it all together and keeping the culture, keeping the movement and the, the music. So... It's also a, a kind of a nice amalgamation of different cultures and and and, um, and yeah. dance moves together. That, I mean, culture is very important. I mean, if you do learn to dance, it's a great introduction to a culture. I mean, a lot of people learn Latin, so they start to get interested in Latin culture, um, visiting Cuba, Latin food, things like that. And it's the yeah. same. Um, with me, swing dance, you get more interested in the past where it was set. And as long as you have like vintage style and not vi vintage morals, as they say, um, don't think vintage, <laughs> which can be a problem. Um, yeah. Can be a bit. People can be a bit reactionary. But um, you suddenly opened up other interests. But culture-wise, very important. Dances are oh, um, saying about slavery as well in the South. The, the dance, like the cakewalk, um, it was a way of taking the piss out of the masters as well. Because the masters were thinking, oh, they're, they're, um, oh, look at those lovely dances. And most of the time, the steps were like, uh, look at the pricks we've got in charge. Um, the cakewalk particularly would take the piss out of um, the owners big time. Mm. Um, but they could do it on the quiet, just like Capoeira. Um, mm. and, like, yeah, culture, it, it is a very big thing. Yeah, I mean, actually... You have the same problem as I do um, in certain areas because of doing an older style of um, of dance. And of course, um, although I don't teach it directly anymore, I teach more self defence moves. Not, and and now into the more traditional martial arts, I did used to teach Bartitu. I used to be part of yeah, the kids yeah. And that's so, that's largely why we know each other. <laughs> yes, and of course, and of course, it's the same thing of older ideas, not of older morals, because of course, um, Bartitu comes from Victorian era England. So um, we have the same problem of there are some people who do these kind of things and are just fucking idiots because they've kind of gone in that idea. But of course, the thing yeah. that I always like about Bartitsu and the thing I always hold um, with it was that it also was the martial art that was taught and then gave rise to um, help with the suffragettes. Um, yes, so exactly. they went and, and learned Bartitsu. Well. Yep, they went and learned Bartitsu, and then from that they created Suffragitsu, and that's how they managed to yeah. defend themselves. Which uh, I, I always like. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the stick fighting, the um, oh, some of the ones who settled in Israel from Hungary, except I think mm. the stick fighting they developed from there as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's but great. yeah, it's the whole problem. Anything Hema, and just in yes. case anyone who's so it doesn't know it, historic European martial arts. You do have people who see historic European yeah. martial arts, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so that's always a problem. But the great thing about, say, Bartitsu or some of the others is the amalgamation of different cultures there. God. Um, if you've got French, etc. The stick fighting, a lot of it came from the Caribbean. Uh, my mm. Julie's mum uh, is from Trinidad originally, my uh, best friend Julie, her mum. And uh, she used to do a little, I think it's called, it, I'm not too certain the pronunciation, but boi. Um, so Trinidadian stick fighting. That's new on me. So she I'm learned a little. Well, again, you've got the rhythm there. We're saying about the crossover, you would have the rhythm in the carnivals. And uh, so they, the drums would get everyone going and get that up. Um, but some of that stick fighting was um, incorporated, I think, in La Cane, as far as I know. There's a great... <sighs> I love Calypsos. Really love Calypsos. So they came from Trinidad. And there's a great one by Small Island Pride, called oh carnival i can't remember now darn it carnival celebration i think and it is about stick fighting and he's using the slang for the names of the 
the knives and the knuckle dusters. Um, the li- I'll, I'll have to. I'll, I'll send you a, a link to that. Yeah. Um, but the, that that's really interesting. Yeah, I love these. Uh, like you say, yeah. The second you you say hammer, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's also missed. It's also mistaken because when you say historical, um, it also. For something like that, it gets split into about 50,000 different pieces as well because some people go, oh, well, that's just LARPing then. You kind of go, no, because there's actual body. <laughs> yeah. It irritates crap out of me. And then some people, I mean, you've got people like David Rawlings um, of Longsword up in London. Um, and, of course, he's part of um, Fighters Against Racism and yeah. uh, he's, he's an expert swords, swordsman. And the amount of pe- keyboard warriors that just have a go at him for being, oh, well, it's just all this. I oh, just fuck off. Um, but ah, oh, that actually come to think of that as well. I mean, Swordmasters. You think, oh, what was his name? Um, I can't remember. One of the greatest swordsmen during the uh, the, the French Revolution was a yeah. He was yeah, a composer. He was black. He was a composer. He was a so one of the best duelists. The amount of yeah. stuff he won. Oh, Saint so jo- Saint somebody or other the surname. Yeah, and of course you got Dumas, Alexander Dumas' yeah. father as well. Yeah, so many of them. So um, the old school. So you've got the input from out, out of there oh. anyway. So immediately you can say, yeah, it might be Hema, but there's a bit of elsewhere, like Harma, historic <laughs> African martial arts. Uh, so there's yeah. a bit from there. Yeah, it's it's so strange, but it's it's that same issue. Um, I think when you try, when you, we can remember the we can remember the past without, you know, having to relive it in terms of morals. You know, there's there's yeah yeah. You know, well, that is. And yeah. that, that's the problem that not a lot of people seem to have. But, um, but definitely... I mean, well, the, one the of the problems... Thing. Oh, go on. One of the problems there with... Um, I love rockabilly. I absolutely love rockabilly. And that's where I first go into it. Because a friend knew I liked country yep. western. He's the fucking Confederate stars and bars. Yeah. Just drop it. Okay, in the <laughs> 70s and that, when you had bands like Mud, they didn't really understand it. They were a bunch of, you know, northern kids or what, working class kids. It's just that was the rockabilly flag. But now that they know what it is, get rid of it. Yeah. It's not. It's like you're. It's like you're waving a fucking swastika. It's. Yes. It's. So yeah, you do have that element, and it is still there, which is really annoying when most of that music is really heavily influenced by blues, jazz. Yeah. It's like yeah, it's black music. <laughs> yeah. It's a white version, but it's still black music. So yeah. just get rid of that crap. Well, it's like it's like, it's like with um, Bartitsu. The biggest influences from it are from Japan. It's not like it's from yeah. France. Okay, there's a bit of French yeah. and German and stuff in there, but it's it's from the East. It's, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we've we've, we've gone into different things there because we, you can't <laughs> avoid it. Um, yeah, but also, I mean, the main you thing to... Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> God, yeah. I mean, the, the main thing to take from there, though, as well, is that despite all those issues with it, the, the, the cultural community side of it is still something to be celebrated that the community oh, God, the, yeah. the bringing together the community you know yeah. whether that was um you, you know the the um the, the slaves being able to take the piss out of slave owners or um being able to defend themselves with the capoeira or whether it's um you know a certain dance it the culture and the bringing together of people and how that's continued is definitely something that i think has helped, and I think especially with people like um, slaves uh, in America, is has, I, I think I can only imagine, and my imagination is shit for it, but I would imagine that without things like that, it would have been incredibly detrimental in their mental health in general, and I'm sure it was anyway. Oh, definitely. But definitely. they had something to keep hold of, and they had... And yeah. I think that's something that can be learnt from the past. That That's the one. That's one element of martial arts and of, of dance that we can definitely use nowadays is that no matter what else is happening, no matter what other shit is going on in your life, no matter what's happening around you, that can still be, that's still something to hold on to. And it's, it's yeah. ce- whether it's a celebration of your culture, because it's an African background, if you're doing capoeira, whether it's a celebration of um, a type of music you like, because it's rockabilly, whatever, it, it you know, it, it's definitely something to, I think, help you, in general, when, when shit's happening, basically. Yeah, well, I, I'm, it's, it is huge, uh, and how far back it goes without people realising it. Charleston, from the 1920s, there are Charleston moves in West Africa. I can't remember which area, but the Charleston is from there. Mm. That's 400 years ago, yeah. but it's still carried on. It's still been looked after, it's still, uh, and, it's, and, and by the 
20th century, it's become mainstream. Yeah. So that is, that must have been hugely culture, um, you know, a, a, um, foundation, something to, to use. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and actually, the same kind of thing with, um, so, but it too, and modern martial arts in general would have come from the East with Japan and China. Of course, a lot of that stuff is suggested to have come, especially in China, to have come from Kaliparati, which is Indian. Yeah. But before that, there's actually evidence that that was influenced by Egypt. So <laughs> it's well, yeah, thousands yeah, of years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, actually, saying about that, there is an Aboriginal uh, martial art. Which? In what, um, Australia. Australia, okay. Yeah, um, which I believe was some of the moves are based on things like kangaroos, etc. I mean, you see a kangaroo fight, fucking hell. Um, so <laughs> yeah. every every culture, I mean, they, they settled Australia. Well, it was, um, I can never remember the name of the larger continent when it was part of New Guinea as well. But 40, 50,000 years yeah. ago. So mm. people were developing martial arts that far back and dancing as well. Yeah, I mean, I still love the most traditional. I, don't, I've, I've, I have suggested this to um, um, some, some racists in the past, that if they want to, because there's, of course, a lot of them are now learning MMA. And my point is always, yeah. if, you, if you want to get rid of that and you, you don't want other people's culture, then you have to only learn English martial arts that yeah. have originated in England and nowhere else, which pretty much leaves us with shin kicking and nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's Welsh, though. <laughs> you know, I put, think. Some, put some uh, put some straw down your down your uh, shins. And oh, kick. that's God, it. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. brutal, but it's not exactly the most uh, it's, effective. It's very brutal. Um, Montserrat, is it Montserrat? I can never pronounce his name properly. He's got oh. how to fight shin kickers. <laughs> yeah. things like that. It's the, he, now that's an interesting man because he was teaching. Um, well, the Jaguar, I think her name was. I can't remember, Jaguarine or something. Um, he was one of those who was teaching women to fence and have self-defense. Yeah. Uh, like Barton Wright as well. They were more than yeah. happy to. That was, they, they were very much... Um, yeah. Barton Wright didn't care if you could do it. Both sexes. Yeah. I mean, it's always written in Barton Wright stuff that if you could do it, he didn't care who you were. The main thing was, did you do it? That was it. That was... Yeah. And actually, I mean if you go back to my one of my favorite and yes i already know the cultural side of this not that fucking great because they had slaves however one of my favorite people um were the spartans and of course yeah. there's a lot of issues but in terms of <laughs> as the were for anyone that time, however they were incredibly good for for women they taught women how, it was compulsory that women had an mm. education and that education included how to fight which is insane yeah. because in in Athens at the same time, which is always the, you know, Athens, there was no compulsory education. They weren't taught to fight. They weren't taught to read. In Sparta, it was compulsory. Yeah. You must be able to learn to read, to write, to um, fight, to look up, you know, everything, which is really weird. Um, all of them together. Scythia as well. Is it Scythia or Scythia, the, where mm. the Amazons were probably originally yeah. from because um, that so many were taught the boat. I think they've just... I think it was this year, maybe a little while back, but one of the graves they'd um, dug up, 13 or 14 year old girl who already had weapons. Yeah. That young. Um, and I think they said from the looks of it, she'd use them. So, well, <laughs> as well. back then, yeah, I can imagine back then. Um, yeah. So if we look at it, um, obviously there's a cultural thing and there's definitely community in, in terms of self-defense, martial Huge, arts, dance, baby. everything. It's, it's just unavoidable because it especially like things like capoeira they come to all of it comes together you know music dance yes. fighting everything comes together um and and community i mean that literally is they used to have their own and i forgot what the name of them was they used to have their own villages that were literally created around this dance fight yes. style yeah. it was the ones yeah. that basically the slave owner because they were free they were they were free slaves effectively that the slave owners left the fuck alone <laughs> well oh, yes exactly like the, maroon, like the maroons in Jamaica, they yeah. all had their own villages where they escaped, etc. And so it was just, um, it, it was such a community thing, and it was based around this dance, fight, music. It was so th that was absolutely bringing people together in the community. So the community side of things is definitely, definitely good in terms of of um, well being. I'd say I think we would definitely agree that. Um, if we step away from just the the social side of it, can you yeah. see? Um, 
what what do you, what do you think would be the biggest benefit in terms of your general well-being, whether that's mental, physical, whatever, um, yeah. f- for things like dance and things like that? What do you think? If we step away from the social side, what's the best best to take from it? Well, if we just say dance, because I don't know enough. Yeah, about no, no, that, yeah, yeah. But dance, it's an exercise which you don't think of as an exercise. I mean, a lot of people like myself, you know, wild horses to drag me to a gym. Um, go out dancing, completely sort of different. Um, it's something you can take at your own pace. So if you want to dance to the slow numbers, which are on during the evening, just dance to the slow numbers. If you feel like one or two, one or two. If you want to be on that dance floor all night long and you're fit enough, you can take it right up. Um, I'd made a note. I didn't realise. Um, I always knew about the calories, but uh, calorie-wise, if you're talking, and of course it's going to vary a lot depending on uh, so weight. Did, yeah. So you'll burn more calories the bigger you are. Um, I mean, uh, I'm a big guy, so when I dance, I burn a lot. But if you start, say, slow-paced ballroom, half an hour can be, let's see, from 100 to 285 calories. That's just slow. Uh, fast-paced ballroom, which would be polka and uh, quick stepping things like that, 160 to 430 calories in half an hour. Um, modern dances, and they mean by that tap, jazz, twist, any of the swing dances, can be from 170 at the lower end to 460 calories in half an hour. Yeah. And then the other one, aerobics, which is just crazy. I mean, that's 230 to 620. Yeah. Now, I don't think do more than half an hour or most three quarters an hour but that's a lot of calories that's up there with some of the the best you know the 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 best sports you can do i mean i think that's up there with some of the martial arts um yeah i mean if you if you think of it in terms of martial arts i can't give you the exact numbers but i i i know that um so kick kickboxing um taekwondo and those are generally the higher end um athletic mma um and i I separate that because there is mma and there's the doing there's the exercise same as everyone else then there's athletic which is basically full-on sparring mma those are the higher end of stuff and then the lower end of things like um aikido uh wing chun tai chi things like that Mm -hmm. um but uh, yeah, I mean that's certainly uh, it's definitely beating most normal exercises in a gym, at least um, for the from the yeah. dance. Um, even if that's actually depending on how fast you jog, that's actually beating general jogging speed as well. Um, yeah, I think that I mean dance fits pretty near the higher end if you if you were to look at it in terms of um, to workouts and things like martial arts. Um, yeah. That's. So, I mean, that would be the faster ones. <laughs> yes, yeah. Unless, of course, we, unless of course, we start to introduce the um, the weapons and the, the weapon martial arts. Just yeah, they're on a different level because of the reaction speed that's needed. Um, but that's that's yeah. very much in, a, in a, an area of its own. Um, <laughs> and, and you're having to heft around something. Although, when you're partner dancing, you're having to move your partner. Yeah, so I suppose um, depending on what you're doing within dance, then if you're far more like that, and of course as well, like you say, it depends on the person because there's there's um there's a lot. I said there's a lot. There's probably like two of them, and I've just seen a lot of the videos. But there's a a, a, <laughs> a lot of the videos of um one-legged dancers in America. Oh who, yes, yeah. And I mean the amount of calories and things they must be able to because yeah. they. They're moving, everything is from, they're dancing way better than I ever can, and they don't have the same amount of limbs. I mean, how the hell do you do? Like, yeah. they move in ways that you don't think you could move if you had both legs. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, they're definitely building it up as well, aren't they? So, because they're supporting their uh, entire body. And it's something there as well. You're saying about that. I've watched some sort of like clips from 90 year olds dancing, and it's like, mm. that's sort of the speed I can, I, you know, okay, I go fast most of the time, but. I mean, there's one couple, again, my, my best friend, Julie, she's friends with this German couple. They're in their late 90s. They're fantastic. They're still doing, I don't think they're doing aerials, but they're in drops. Actually, there was um, some well-known uh, swing dancers from the 1930s. Frankie Manning was the first person to do aerials, so throws and things. Like he, he organized that. He was dancing until he passed away about 96. Um, then um, Jean Veloz is another dancer you see from films in the 40s. She's still around and she's still dancing. 
she's tiny. So when she, they still do throws, they're gentle. <laughs> so I think dropping her, probably shatter, but she's still doing it. Um, yeah. And it's that thing of, of you can keep dancing as you get older, you just don't have to put as much effort in. Um, I mean, that's a, it, it's one of those um, exercises which you can just carry on for the whole of your life. Yeah, and I suppose that is, um, is it's definitely, because you can see some people that are in their 50s that look as if they're 90. But then you see people yes. that have done something like dance or martial arts or whatever it is, something active that involves, yeah. actually involves them using their brain as well because of the movements. And they always look so much younger. I mean, think of all of the, the grandmasters in Japan that are that seemingly have always been alive. Um, the, you yes. know, <laughs> yeah. And then you've got, like, like you say, I've seen some of those videos as well where there's no woman on the street um, and she's about 80. Oh, old. that's a lovely thing. Yeah, I know what you mean. Grand- you see, you've yeah. got a lot of that. So it's very, yeah, you do. So it's, in terms of well-being, I think mentally and physically, it's definitely shown that you're, you're getting something out of it there. Because me- mentally it, they have, I, I can't remember all the details, but mentally they have uh, done studies of older people who um, have kept dancing. Mm. And they are far less likely to have Alzheimer's. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, the particularly again with partner dancing where you have to react if, mm. if um, um a lead will get so a lead has to think of the move and the follow has to think of the reaction that's going to be like that so it's very very good for keeping the brain active um i think they've done quite a few studies which one of the best ways in later life to keep your brain active um and yeah they all look so young uh, the, you yeah. know they they do i mean lots of my friends um, if you are into sort of swing dance, they have a tendency for you know, you're going to dole, dole up. So already they're looking good, but they do look, I mean, there's people who are, they look about 10, 15 years, maybe 20 years younger than they are. Someone I know, she goes out dancing, she's like 82. I thought she was like 60. Yeah. It's, it's amazing to see. It really is. Um, be, reason for my youthful looks. Huh? You'll do you, sorry? <laughs> it's the reason for my youthful looks. <laughs> yeah. Um, You've thrown me now. <laughs> I <laughs> know you're bloody youthful looking. You're still a youth. Um, well, not to, not to many people watching this, I'm not. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Once we're past sort of <clears throat> whatever I am. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're all ancient. Um, yeah, born in the last, but, yeah. if you're born in the last century, you're kind of out of it, aren't you? Um, yeah, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> um. But mentally, yeah, it is very, very good mm. for things like that. But also, I mean, it's very good for um, depression and mm. things like that. Now, because I was <coughs> doing this, I thought I'd have a quick look at some, uh, some of the studies. And I had a, a Swedish study where they took uh, 100 teenagers and half of them Oh, 100 teenagers who had depression or anxiety problems, and half of them, uh, they had weekly dance classes. And that half, they all, the depression and anxiety all dropped. And eight months after they stopped doing the classes, they were still benefiting from the dancing. So that shows how effective it is or can be yeah. for... Um, keeping depression at bay. I mean, you, you know, your, your endorphins kick in and, and um, oh God, I've forgotten the name of it. Um, dopamine. Do- yeah, there we go. Thank you. Dopamine and, and uh, adrenaline. They're all up. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, okay. I mean, it's anyone who thinks this is going to make you better. No, of course, it's going to be alongside whatever sort of um, treatment your doctor suggests yeah but it does it, it certainly helps i mean yeah. i was i've just come off and i've been on um antidepressants for a few years uh various things happened at one 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 time and, and just went bad um so i knew i needed those but the dancing made a massive difference yeah huge difference. The, the, the combination you, of the two yeah you, you, you can't be down if you're listening to music you like, whatever the music is. If you're listening to music you like and you're letting it take, I mean, it takes over. You're out of the zone, you know, you're out of, mm. of the whole thing. You are in your own, in the moment. You're lost. It's the music you like with friends you like. Um, 
you, how can that not be good? <laughs> I mean, it, it does bring you back to that, um, that, that social side as well with that, because I mean, it's, yes. if, you, if you look at countries like um, uh, Italy, Spain, Southern America and places like that, their rates of depression are down here. They're, and they're, they're oh, mental health. Sure. Yeah. But what are some of the, what are they most known for? Dancing, music, um, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, you know, yeah. they, they go hand in hand. And, and, and they, community as well. And community, uh, I and think, it's part I think, of it, yeah. I think the big problem now, okay, this is possibly me just spitballing and talking bullshit, but maybe the big problem now is we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're losing community. Uh, you know, oh, what's the main thing? To make money, to, to mm. get on well, etc. rather than, okay, let's put something back. Let's make sure everyone gets on well. Yeah. Uh, so maybe, yeah, we are losing the community. Uh, yeah. And dance I mean, could be part of that. About you reinforcing community. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's been quite good, actually, um, since lockdown to see who's responded best to keep a community. Um, yeah online and i have to say certain certain groups have done better than others um i have to say yeah. uh you know this the student union at christchurch i think has done pretty well it's li- i think like a day after lockdown went in they created a group on facebook and they started adding people and they were starting to oh, do stuff um i don't think it's quite as active as it was at the beginning but then that's because people have the the stress and anxiety people needed to to talk isn't quite as high as potentially it was back then. So that's kind of evened mm. itself out, but there was a community they could go to. Um, yes. I don't think the university reacted at all. I still don't think it's reacted. So, um, so <laughs> it is interesting seeing how different people react to it. And I suppose there's that ability to, um, to change according to the moment. And I think obviously student union are, are younger people. They're used to using the social media already. The university, yeah isn't um and of course but it's also it's led from the bottom up there yes yeah yeah yeah. definitely that that makes a lot i think that makes a lot of difference when you have that uh with the students they are a community who will i don't know i mean i never went to uni but i take it they're a community who look after each other so you still have those bonds and you've got to do that sometimes because most of the time no one fucking does it so for you so <laughs> yeah i mean so, uh, it's yeah. it far more of a, a look after the community okay you've got the the outliers um but a lot of societies intermingle um a lot of the clubs intermingle and is yeah yeah i think you do have a um you do have something there so i think yeah i think that the 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 kind of overarching thing there is is community in general um because there's a i think even if you think because i think music and um, and dance goes to have a, it goes together hand in hand the same way as a flow and martial arts do because yeah. no matter how yeah. you may think in your head but music and martial arts are together together but there is a flow and I think it's that same type of idea I, I saw something or... again because I was looking at something I yeah. saw something saying about flow and I hadn't even used I hadn't heard the term in dance so thank you actually for asking me to do this because it's made me <laughs> research more. there you go <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think those, I mean, the first thing you think of when you think of um, society, societies in university or clubs, and universities and community is, after, let's, say, let's say that on, on their worst times when they've had a few drinks, yeah. actually the first thing that comes to the mind, because everyone will think the first thing that comes in, oh, there's, there's fights, but it's not, is it? The first thing that comes, in, comes and happens Don't is you. you start drinking. <laughs> hey, oh, I know that song. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. <laughs> That's what's happened, you know. You you get yeah. rugby and football guys suddenly singing along because you know, good Charlotte's come on the. I, I say good Charlotte. How many people listening to this know who they are? Um, <laughs> because, because a band has come on to come on to uh, the uh, overall. You know, um, it's it's quite nice. I think that community music flow it definitely does come together. I think it's very hard to feel, although it does happen, and obviously there are people out there introverts who will hate parts of that but I oh think God, yeah a lot a lot of the time it is still very difficult to find yourself in a bad place where you're against your own well-being if you've got a community in a kind of a yeah, yeah, a loving kind of nice sing-along society around you so yeah it's definitely i, I think that's definitely kind of goes together um well, for introverts as well i mean dancing is just as good because okay uh, if you don't want to do it with partners or something 
dance at home. Just put a music, some, uh, some number you like on and just jiggle around. And if you want to learn things, YouTube, what a resource. Yeah. Whatever you want to learn. YouTube's just fantastic. You know, model making as well. I've been using it a hell of a lot because I'm really nerdy on that side. Um, and, and history, et cetera, et cetera. But if you just want to learn a couple of dance moves and just piddle around and have fun by yourself, YouTube's brilliant. It's the one time we, it's, it's, where we diverge, Andrew, because for, for my side, don't learn it off YouTube. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I, I, I agree. Good ones, but there, there's some good ones where they're saying, I used to probably going more with, with um, weapons, HEMA. I've just seen some good ones where they're showing you a drill. And, and I thought, well, that's good. That's the sort of thing you'd practice. Yeah, there, there's um, patterns and yeah, stuff, so I obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I've seen too many where people, um, people's idea of knife defence is to grab the blade. So it worries me. Um, well, rather than run like fucking buggery. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, YouTube is a great thing. And actually, it kept coming to my mind again because the first thing I think of when I think of YouTube, because I know... Um, a couple of YouTubers and things like that. YouTube community is something that's banded around all the time. It's the YouTube your yeah. community of creators and of, of everything else. So, oh God, yeah. You know that that's that's the idea of it. And yep, dance. I mean, I'm trying to think because there's so many there's so many dances you can do by yourself as well. And I'm trying to think of the name of this guy and I can't. Who was the one that um, that Michael Jackson stole the uh, moonwalk from? Oh, um, uh, Bojangles, Billy Bojangles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, oh, that goes back years. The yeah. it definitely well, I, I know there was yeah. like one, there was one very kind of really overly animated person that did it. So I, I can remember yeah. seeing them. Yeah, yeah the moonwalk. Mean, yeah, goes back yeah, ages. Got, and I mean, his, his kind of, I think of his web dance when you say about um, introverted people and trying to do it at home, because f from what I can remember, if it's the same person I'm thinking of, he's so kind of free in the way that he's dancing that it's not as if you compared for instance the moonwalk from michael jackson to his it's not the same M michael jackson's is very kind of yeah. rigid and oh yes but we yeah whereas yeah. the original was kind of yeah you know moving around having fun it hey, is, we did this. Awful, yeah um yeah that, i mean with dancing as well there's nothing new under the sun no. um street dance you know where you're spinning your head round on the floor and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. i've seen that in clips from the 1890s <laughs> where they're street dance moves they are yeah. and of course as somebody points out yeah you can see that but before that when you didn't have moving image what did they do then probably the same thing um yeah. so yeah. so it's good for learning history but um yeah i mean that's that's actually a point that me and um <coughs> tom davy um one of our guest instructors um, who does uh, stunt work and things. Um, mm. We've made this point before is that there's, so many, there's, there's only so many effective, wa effective ways of hurting someone. Uh, after a yeah. while, they all add up. So it's the same in martial arts. You know, uh, you get everyone going, oh, yes, but what's the most effective martial art? Well, all of them, if you take the right thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. if it there's, works, there's only a certain amount of ways the body's going to move. Exactly. It's body mechanics. It's, yeah. it's, it's, same it's with um, so, yeah, it's... Um, it's good, yeah. Go on. Yeah, one of the th one of the things I'm going to do a quick class now. Quick oh, class right. is for everyone. You want to learn a dance, the twist. Now I'm not going to get up and do it because I'm just going to say this is a five second dance class, or possibly ten. Right, <laughs> stub out a cigarette, stub out a cigarette with the other foot. Now do them at the same time. Now dry yourself off with a towel, and that's how you learn the twist. There we go. <laughs> a dance class in less than 10 seconds. So stub out a cigarette, stub out another cigarette, dry yourself off with a towel. Done. I like, I like that. I'm, I'm wondering how you're going to have to replace that in 10 years when everyone's vaping, but... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I had to teach it at a, a primary school once, and I think, oh, God, no, I can't say it. Can <laughs> Five-year-old, yes, yeah, stub out. No. Um, oh, I know, step on the bug. No, I can't say that. <laughs> So I just thought, oh, oh, what do you do? Um, uh, oh, dear, there's gum on machine. No, they can't have chewing gum. That one was a difficult one. And dry yourself off with a towel. I shouldn't be talking to children about towels. <laughs> yeah, so that was, a, I managed it. I can't remember how. And it was, but, but yeah, yeah, vaping. <laughs> um, thinking about primary school and things like that, and I, I forgot this from earlier, but I remember, and I don't know if people still do this or whether it's died off as a, as a, as a dance, but Maypole. When I was younger. Well, when we're talking about community, I was actually thinking Maypole and Morris dancing and folk dancing, it's all the same sort of thing. Unfortunately, it's now become 
people think a bit square. But if you look at the history of it, that's very interesting as well. I mean, um, I, don't, I don't think Morris Dance has ever, ever been popular, but Maypole was always something that it was like, well, again, for anyone that doesn't know, I'm from a village. I'm, I'm from the countryside. So I come across all this. I'm, I'm not from Kent, if you can't tell from the, from the voice. I'm from West Sussex, but I'm from, I'm from a village in West Sussex. It's very, re- very repressed. So <laughs> Maypole dancing was just, you did the Maypole. Everyone did Maypole dancing. It wasn't yeah. an option. You just, that's what you did at primary um, school. Morris dancing is one of the few times I've seen blood drawn. One of the sticks broke yeah. when I was years back and it flew through the air and kicked, hit this kid in the nose. Boom! Oh, yeah. poor bugger. Um, Morris yeah. dancing, this just made me think actually with self-defence, it was probably come from Moorish dancing. So it was bought from Very uh, Egypt, etc. Um, and when that, is a weapon. that is a weapon. Well, possibly a weapon. Because yeah. they, they still have stick fighting, or stick dancing in North Africa. I've been a friend of mine on, on Facebook. Um, he does, oh, I can never remember the name of it, but there's a North African stick fight. Um, I, oh, God, I can't remember his name, but he, so he does that. There's oh, so yeah, many. exactly. But um, and with two. Oh, there's two great big sticks. How do you manage that? I just, um, I just, but they did, and there is still with belly dancing, the, um, there is one which uses sticks and swords. So the relationship there. Yeah. And actually, yeah, so think, more, yeah, more think of swords and sticks and stuff. And actually, you get you start to get into Highland dance as well, don't you? Because that was yeah, uh, how you used to it yeah. was the swords over each other, wasn't it? And uh, the Russians do something similar, I think, as well. Oh, Cossack, isn't it? It's old Cossack dancing. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, that stuff's amazing. That <laughs> that stuff. You've well, got that, to be I mean, ridiculous. That's when you look at well, we look at well-being. Definitely the physical side in Cossack dancing. I mean, you think of the one of the most well-known martial artists in the world, undefeated champion, is a Cossack. It's um, um, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Oh, and really? He, this guy who has had some questionable ways of training because he used to he used to fight bears, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were up by a chain. That's where the issue is. But he did use to well, fight. Yeah. But, um, but of course, <laughs> but he's still mental for fighting the bloody things. But, um, but of course, he's a Cossack and he's a traditional Cossack. Because yeah. if you ever watch him when he goes into the ring or the, the octagon, he has the traditional Cossack headdress on. And yeah. I've seen him do the dancing. So he, he's, it's, he's definitely, and, and Cossacks are very community based as well. And yeah. um, he's, yeah, I've, I've seen him do the dancing. So that, you I have the physical side. I have, I have tried Mongo, Mongol, Mongolian wrestling. Oh, there nice. was a, yeah, there was a, a, a fundraising thing for wild camels. Um, and it was at Lim, Lim Castle? No. Oh, no. Was the, begins with C, one near Canterbury. I can't remember which it is. Charlton, Charlton, Chillum, Chillum Castle. Chillum Castle, right. Yeah. yeah. And they had uh, a Mongolian day, so they were raising money for Mongolian um, wild camels because they're quite rare now. And they had falconry, they had Mongolian food, very nice. Uh, Mongolian music, which is brilliant, throat singing. Mm, wonderful oh, yeah. stuff. Absolutely love that. And some Mongolian wrestling. And I was like, yeah, we want volunteers. I'll do it. I was, I didn't know I was out to take the top off. So I was just, oh God, it was, it wasn't a sight. It was like blancmange wrestling. But um, I, I did all right. And, and then unfortunately faced some complete psychopath who, who I think was, uh, it wasn't a mong, a mong, I got thrown by them, but this other guy, he, was, he, he must have obviously done wrestling or something. That hurt. That really hurt. But, but yeah, I've tried, I tried Mongolian wrestling. That was fun. It was really one of the one of the greatest ever um, um, sumo wrestlers is Mongolian, who was brought up on Mongolian. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he got used to being able to throw people, and the Japanese just weren't used to it when he stepped in the in the ring. Um, yeah, and it, it, it does seem to continually come back to this idea of community, doesn't it? This this yeah. bubbling because it is I mean Mongolian wrestling is a very community based thing. Okay, they're still yeah. it's very patriarchal, but the women are still involved. It's, it's still, yeah. a, it's, although it's patriarchal, it is still, it isn't, it isn't oppressive as a day. It's still very, um, very good. And actually it's one of the very, actually think about sumo wrestling as well of, of that end um, in a cultural sense, that actually allows foreigners to do it as well, which is yeah. 
you know, considering Mongolia is quite a cut off place, really, in, in certain parts. That's actually really, yeah. really nice to see as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of it definitely comes back to because you think of, you know, Morris dancing, Maypole dancing, um, Highland dancing. You think of then how it goes into Cossack and then into the martial arts. Yeah. And, um, you know, you go into the, then the Mongolian wrestling, to sumo wrestling. And it's all about community. I mean, sumo wrestlers live together. They literally have to live yeah. together. It's part of their yeah. thing. They're not allowed to marry until they're like 30 odd. It's like the old Spartans, basically, because they, they, mm. they, they are a community. They eat together, they sleep together, they train together. Um, That's why you think of the Zulu as well, of course. You had the married yeah. and the unmarried res- um, regiments. So, again, community. Yeah. Yeah, and everyone very, lived together there. Yeah, it's very community. I mean, yes, before anybody, you know, if anybody is still watching and you decide to comment, I'm well aware of the, the, the crap that comes a lot, along with a lot of this we know and we can't ignore it but yeah the the cultural benefits are still there um and there's still a community basis and i think that's the bit we we should take from it um we can recognize the past at the same time as taking the benefits from it um oh god yeah it's um the, the past wasn't better or worse it was just different that's I what mean, I, I think, always think i think it was definitely well i mean the morals were worse I think that's what we can agree on. <laughs> that, oh, um... God, well, yeah. But there are certain <laughs> things which were better and yes. certain things which were worse, etc. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean... you, you had, you had um, oh, even Homer was talking about the golden past and saying about, oh, the kids are today, and even Rome, I think. Oh, yeah. these aren't proper Romans. <laughs> um, Every, it's yeah, not like when I was young. Oh, everyone's worse. Every generation is a is a problem for every other generation. Um, yeah. I always find really funny for someone like me because I'm depending on how you translate it. I'm three different generations because by virtue of when I was born, I'm a millennial. By virtue of my parents, I'm a um, silent generation. I <laughs> saw your talk about this uh, something else, but. You got the, the the generations the wrong way around. The silent generation came before the boomers. Did it? I thought it was after. Because when no, I looked at silent after, generation, is the one which came after the GI generation, stroke greatest generation, because they were too young to fight in the war, so they were silent. That's why they're silent. The baby okay. boomers was basically where everyone came back from war and just got to it, and <laughs> and you know, <laughs> and another gen- big big generation. So in which case. In which case, I would be Generation X then. Oh, the coolest of the lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was a website I looked at, so it might be that different countries define it differently as well, because I, th- I think I looked yeah, at... Yeah, there are different names. I've got a good chart I'll try and find and send to you, because it yeah. says about the beginning... Again, it's a bit daft, because it's too... It's too... Oh, big, God, yeah. it's, I mean, know, it a millennial... No. I mean, a millennial is everything from 1981 to 1996. I mean... yeah. Yeah, the cultural change in those you know, yeah. people were born during the Soviet, like me, were born during the Soviet era. To yes. people who were to then, then you have people who are the same generation who were never born in a time where Nelson Mandela wasn't free. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. that is not the same. <laughs> um, that's yeah. why I always find it really weird. But um, but yeah, of course. It is weird for people like me because I'm I'm of two I'm of two or three different generations in well, one. My my I, my dad I, I was very late in life. Uh, my dad and mum were quite old when I was. So I my father was old fashioned for them even. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's very weird because I mean and also my dad is northern, so there's a very um, uh, there's a very kind of a work ethic that I think exists, especially existed back then from yeah. the north that didn't necessarily exist here because if, i'm thinking specifically of the time period for when i was born which was uh, 80s britain the north is you know we've got we've got the 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 laboring and we've got that's what we've you know that's what you do yeah. you get. and then the south where my mother is from and where i'm from of course is the yuppie generation in the 80s so it's yeah <laughs> That's the third generation that I come under as well as the yuppie generation. Um, so oh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Very, it's very weird because, of course, you, you, you get brought up in that, that, that. It's very strange. Generations are very strange because they just, they kind of mould into one, really. 
Yeah, it, it, I, I keep seeing it. So, oh, we've got to divide up the millennials now because you had them. In, and I thought, oh, come on, this is ridiculous. Well, the new it, millennials it, it, and the old millennials, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, and I think you know, I saw you do something you're saying about it's too much of a sweeping uh, thing. All baby boomers are, are reactionary and all millennials are like wanting to have change. It's like, no, I know quite a few of this, 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 this. You do have a gen, you know, a sort of, I mean, there is a route to certain stereotypes by the way people think, but it's, it's, I'm about as, I'm definitely, definitely very left wing in comparison. Um, and I'm completely out, I'm definitely should not be <laughs> my generation. No, I mean, I'm, 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 I mean, weirdly, I am probably a mix. I'm in terms of, oh, and I'm sure people won't like this, economically, I'm quite right wing, but I'm from, I'm from, a very affluent southern area and it's always benefited me and no matter how much you try and throw your own opinion at it you can't get away from it if your if your own lifestyle reinforces the opinion you had it is very hard even when you believe it to be wrong or right for you to oh, change yeah. it it's, it's incredibly hard but then socially i would align with generation z now you know the people that were born yeah, in the yeah. 2000s it's, it's I, I, well, really weird yeah, i mean I look at the, the generations now and I think we we actually have more hope now um, for change than we ever did. Um, they, they're very savvy and, uh, yeah, I'm nothing but respect. This isn't just because I'm talking to you guys. But <laughs> <laughs> it is always weird because it's, there's, there's a thing on, on TikTok. There's always the jokes on TikTok when they have um, TikTok with the Generation Z going, um, and talking to millennials and going, oh God, what are you doing here? You know, with the social media generation and, and the millennials <laughs> going, wait, we created the social media. <laughs> uh, um, it is always funny. I mean, my funniest one is always when you see the papers, when they're always having to go, specifically millennials, which I found hilarious, um, having to go of like, oh, well, they're just so violent. Because that was the first thing. Before we were, before we were lefty and and too much we were violent so i don't know when the change yeah. um but you know how we were so violent and they're going do you remember the 60s like you used to go stab people each other on brighton beach what the hell what? well um, yeah exactly you know there's areas right in paris <laughs> i don't even know how we got onto this i love this is why i like podcasts. I'm, I'm sorry yes i was I just know. thinking what the fuck are we oh, talking about um, I have, it's brilliant i this is why i love podcasts it just goes off we um Let's go back to what we were doing. We've done the mental health, but physical health. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'd started on it, and then fuck knows, I just ah, went is, off on that. This is the point of podcast, um, and that's why... Oh, by the way, just for everyone uh, <laughs> listening, if you haven't figured it out, I usually say this at the beginning, I forgot to say it, these are unedited, because yeah. <laughs> otherwise you can edit something to make you look as good or bad as you want. These are unedited. We are both as good and bad as we are. <laughs> so, yeah. Carry on, sorry. Yeah. Um, no, physically, I mean, we've said about... <clears throat> mentally, I think dance is, is a very, very good exercise because you're not thinking of it as an exercise. You can relax. You can... Um, you're going to get a feeling which you don't get in a gym where everyone's on a machine and we're all separate. There is a, I know there is a certain gym thing. I have seen it where people do get to know and they mix, but you, you don't... Not as much. But physically... Um, the great thing is you can do it at your own level. So you can go for wild swing dancing or you can go for some sort of stroll around the dance floor. Mm. You're still going to get it. It's great cardio, really great cardio. Um, <clears throat> perfect for keeping blood pressure down, um, keeping cholesterol down. Strengthens your lower legs yeah. um, uh, because, well, you're on them when you're doing it. Uh, it's quite good for toning up. Um, breathing, perfect for breathing. So it's, um, you, you're having to breathe. <laughs> um, so the fact that you've got all those, the physical side combined with how great it is mentally, I, I think dance is perfect for anyone who doesn't want to go out to a gym or to do sport because you can think of it as it's not sport, I'm just having fun. Yeah. And it's also something, just go down the local nightclub and just go on the dance floor. The, the thing with um, most dances, though, uh, it's a safe place normally for any, anyone who's by themselves who might be nervous. Um, there's people are there to learn to dance. People yeah. are there most of the time to dance. You're not gonna, if you want to go out and dance, 
and not worry about people hitting on you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, ballroom or swing dance, Latin, not so much because it, it's a bit of a different sort it's of thing. Latin, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Although there you do have people who just want to learn Latin yeah. and they like the music and they like Latin culture. So, but I mean, when I I, I dated a, a a Latin champion dancer, she um, so I did go to a couple of Latin things and. There's a different feel, there. but again, still, if you want to go dancing, it's a nice environment. You just go dancing. You, 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 you should feel um, safe. Organisers should keep an eye on things anyway. Now, I do remember the Latin. I, I went out one night, whether it was in Charing Cross Road, it was quite a big, well-known Latin club, and, and I tried a little bit. It wasn't me that much, but she's saying, right, remember, this isn't jive, this isn't swing dancing, it's sensual. You have to be sensual. So we tried dancing, and then she, then we're having another one, and she said, don't forget, you should be sensual. This is a Latin dance. <laughs> By about the third or the fourth, he went, do you know what? Just do what you want to do. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't be sensual to save my life. I was just <laughs> bouncing around like a lunatic. Um, the other good thing with, with dance, I don't think it really pointed out, is how it's intergenerational, how you've got people in their 80s hmm. down to, like, four or five, six-year-olds. Yeah. Uh, that's nice. You know, it's, it's, we were talking about generations and sometimes it's, it's bullshit. Everyone should be disliking each other because of their generation. You go to these things, it's what we said about community as well. You'd have the same thing in community. You, everyone's just mixing yeah. um, and having fun. And that's a good way you can get to know older or younger people uh, yeah. and see their viewpoints. Yeah, I mean... When it comes to that, when it comes to a generational divide in terms of martial arts and self-defense, it gets a bit more difficult, especially on the oh, martial right. arts. Okay. Well, especially on the martial arts side, because again, depending on which martial art you're doing, but if you're looking at the more traditional, the most popular ones, you know, judo, karate, wing chun, there's a, an automatic respect that is inbuilt, and you have different levels of. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, belting according to age. So it's not the same. Yeah. You, you get these people that have like, oh well, they they're they're a they're a, a green belt or they're a brown belt, and they're they're only nine years old. Yes, but that's not the same as a brown belt um, or green belt or black belt, or whatever, who's forty years old. That's very different. Yeah. It's not the same, and you're separated differently. Um, it's not like yeah. you line up in that. You do line up according to rank, but not the same depending on where you are. And even how you talk to someone, there's far more re of a, a respect that is shown within the traditional martial arts than maybe in dance. Because I, I can't ever imagine for me if we translate into English, going if you're at one of your classes, going please teacher. Whereas if you're in a dojo, sensei. You know, it, which is what it is. It's yeah. So it's it's very different. And actually, when you get um, when there is an older person who is your teacher in martial arts, they are O sensei. And so there's another level of respect because they're old. That is basically what the O for. If you ever hear someone say O sensei, that's what they mean. Old sensei, <laughs> basically. I mean, there is there is certain respect for the older teachers, definitely. Because yeah. I mean, you've got the teachers who I was saying about Frankie Manning, um, mm. Norman Miller, um, Gene Fellows, who they were the ones who made invented it yeah um so you do have that and you've got respect for older people as well so there will be that but um yeah um ballroom i think you have grades <laughs> I, I don't know much about ballroom that's the len you... goodman style stuff that, sorry yeah, i know that... it's not you know but you know that kind of thing yeah? yeah it's that sort of thing where you have grades um so there must be a similarity there yeah but when i'm talking about just social dancing yes yeah. You've got people who win a cup, but most of the time it's like, um, okay, your prize is you're going to get to this weekend or next week. Um, very informal. Um, so you don't have that, that same content competition as you would with ballroom. Or I take it with a lot of martial arts. No, I mean, I suppose the only ones, again, it's, it's dependent because it's all dependent on the dojo you go to. Or, where, or, you know, the gym or whatever you go to. I think it is far more relaxed in, say, things like MMA and yeah. in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Although there is respect shown, it's... I mean, BJJ was created by a family, and so there's still a family yeah. feel. So you, you're still... Like, 
for the for the clubs, especially for Carlson Gracie clubs, you're very much kind of going up to each other, shaking everyone's hand before you even start. It's oh, how you do? You know, cool. Yeah. And then you start. So you're kind of it's to put people at ease, and that there's although there is respect, it's it's you know that there's a, a more family feel there. And again, with MMA, yeah. because it's not really, especially depending on which MMA place you go to, there's no real ranking. There's just a, oh, no, it's that more person, informal. that person's better. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's more <laughs> informal and there's more of a, a feel, especially the no gi um, places for BJJ and, and things like that. Um, but then, like I say, it, it is dependent. So I suppose it's the, di- it's the same kind of difference, I suppose, between, say, Latin and ballroom. You know, one of them is more relaxed, one of them isn't. And it would be the yeah. same between, say, MMA and a strict... Um, uh, judo, um, traditional judo uh, place because you know it's no no that's that's that person that's that person you know um, I don't I mean I don't know about you but for simple things like you can't step on the mat um, say you're say there's some people on the mat already for for judo you must bow to whoever is the highest rank there on the mat before okay. you get on the mat so there's there's, yeah. there's the respect and things like that are very much there. Now, I was brought up very traditional, so I even step onto the mat with this, a specific foot first. Um, so there's, oh, okay. there's a lot of... They're not, they're, that's very much not there all the time now with all, all clubs, but there is still a, a different kind of... There's still a hierarchy there that, although it's still very community-based, it's not necessarily as relaxed, potentially, <laughs> in terms of that kind of area. Oh, of, uh- I'm thinking in terms of generational, like you said, is because the older people who may have learnt it further back when things were stricter, like I did, um, and will likely be a higher grade. And it's, yeah, it, it gets a bit fluffy. Uh, whereas yeah. the newer stuff like MMA and BJJ, which are newer, especially MMA, it's not as much that. So again, it's, it's you know, the generation... I, I did a, a few classes. I have a, a, a nine on long sword. Um, so I did a couple with um, Jason who does the Canterbury um, okay. uh, long sword classes. Cool. And that's, that's about as old and traditional as you can get, but that was very informal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot We're of them are. I mean, 15th century there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of them are, I mean, yeah. I, like I say, I mean, if you then you say 15th century, but then, think about how old jiu-jitsu and the japanese oh, yeah, stuff are so um but yeah i mean again obviously shin kicking is very relaxed but that goes back to the 17th century so yeah it's yeah. it's i think it does depend like i say it does depend on it but a lot of the more traditional or ones that people when you say to someone martial arts what comes into their head karate judo those kind of ones i think can be a bit iffier when it comes to generational stuff anyway um yeah again there's still a community feel and even like i say bjj mma there's still a community feel there's still a community feel in aikido judo even the older ones even if there is a rank um change there's still a there's still a community feel that is definitely there um, um it's maybe not as relaxed we're talking about the relax and, and how comfortable whatever it is. I think that finding the right sort of dance is going to be very similar to the right sort of martial art because um, mm. I suppose people are going to learn in an environment with martial arts are more comfortable with. They like might, they might like a formal way. They might like a more informal way. Yes, uh, yes. So it might be depending on how they learn. It might be the same with dance classes. Um, you might like the formality of ballroom or you might like laid back sort of street dancing um as well as fitness it's how you learn um yeah yeah i mean if you're very much more um for for instance let's separate self-defense again because self-defense and martial arts are different as there is a podcast if anyone's thinking about please do (laughs) like comment and subscribe and go back into the back catalog there is stuff on there um but uh yeah if you look at self-defense um if you were looking at more laid back you would not come to me I mean, you know yourself, I'm much more, well, like, yeah. you know, just fucking do it. Don't, yeah. let's, we're not, we're not messing about. This isn't, this isn't kiddies playground. Do it because this, this, you need to feel this. You need to, you yeah. know, um, like I say, you know yourself from when we were teaching. So no, no, just, just do it. Um, and so, yeah, it is very much dependent. I always say to people, you know, come and, come and see how, how you like what I do first. When we're teaching in the, in the university, come along first don't just don't just throw your money at it and sign up because it's no. something on Freshers Fair because I guarantee you you'll turn up 
you might enjoy it and then suddenly intro's over and then i'm gonna go right dirty fucking i mean one of the first things and if anyone's watching this and thinking of coming to the class next year um i will make an asshole speech as i call it which is <laughs> i i introduce myself as the best and worst parts of me um for your training is i'm an asshole and um that's how i introduce it because People outside that are attacking you are arseholes. So you need the person that's in charge you need to be an arsehole. Is the way I look at it. Um, so the, whereas you might have somebody else who's far more relaxed and just purely because of potentially how they were brought up or what martial art they come from is going to be yeah. very different. Now, it might be that you come from a, you know, similar to me. Your, your dad was a, was a, a northerner and old fashioned. And so somebody telling you, you know, fucking do what you're, te- you're told, son is what you want, actually, and that, yeah, that how you yeah. learn. Um, so you would potentially go, oh, yeah, no, I want to go to there. That's, that seems more likely. So like you say, is it can be very dependent on the, on the instructor, um, the, the, the teacher. So, of course, uh, and, how, some, you know. and how you learn as well. I mean, I'm yes. never insulted if people aren't going to like my classes because someone else will do. Um, yeah. The one, the one thing I always, I do find annoying is at the end when you get, oh, did you enjoy? Yeah, we'll definitely be back. And I thought, I'm never going to see you again, am I? <laughs> Anyone who says they're going to definitely do anything is most of the time they're just saying what they think you want to hear. It's like, yeah. Nah, if they so, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I'll, I'll try and come back, and you will see them again. <laughs> That's what I've always found. Um, yeah, it's it, the honesty rather than what people. Uh, one, but yeah, so I'm not in. So if people don't learn with me, then um, don't learn with someone else. So I might just not be the style. The music might not be right. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's it's one of those things. I mean, I, I don't know as many of the the people around for you, but I know, for instance, you may you may be better off with Tom Davy or or Phil down in down in Dover if you want to learn. Um, you know, more locks and things like that. You think that's yeah. going to work for you. Um, you're going to be in close quarters. That's going to work for you. If you want something more relaxed and, and more flowing, you might go to Barry Fellon in Canterbury. I'm not going to take offense to it. They are very good martial artists by themselves. I mean, Jesus Christ, Barry Fellon's a world champion. So I can't, I'm not going to take offense to me. It's just, mm. I'm not their cup of tea. Fair enough. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's just how it, it's just how it happens. Um, and I think, that's i think that's a nice thing about dance and martial arts both have that and i think we always we keep looping back around to i think it's very hard to to get away from it's that community thing it's that kind of yeah the the decent places now of course there's and we've talked about this in a different podcast me and tom davy for both dance and for martial arts there are charlatans out there um, uh, well, yes, <laughs> and so they don't have it the same. It doesn't matter feel. so much with dance; it really no. matters with self defense. Well, yeah, um, but that's where you don't necessarily have the feel because for dance classes, they just want your money. For yeah, self defense yeah. and martial arts, they just want your money. So there's not the same feel there. But I think if you'd go into a decent martial arts, self defense, dance place, that's when you kind of know it because you you have that feel. I mean, we have people that have. Um, been dating for a year or two or just got together from the self-defense classes. That's how they met. Yeah, well, you know? that is the, that, that actually the one thing I really like with people who've met in my classes or whatever. When I used to teach up in London with Julie, we've been to people's weddings. They met through our classes and it is, yeah. we don't mention the divorces. <laughs> Keep we haven't been running those. long enough for that, so we're okay. Yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah, let's just not go there. But, <laughs> Um, but it's, it's nice. It is nice. Cause although, as I was saying, it's a safe environment. Cause I went out, I wanted to learn the dance because I like the music and I watched the dance and thought, shit, that looks cool. Um, but everyone I've dated since then, um, is the, because of the dancing, but that's not why I went dancing. Hmm. That was the same with the safe environment. Um, it's, you still possibly meet someone. Um, but it is more socializing. Yeah, making the friends, which is good for men- mentally. Again, if you've got an, a, um, friends with an, a shared interest, I mean, a lot of the time there's a few of us we'd go to a museum because there's something about, I don't know, 1930s Harlem, or there's a display in Art Deco, um, or oh, the cinema. There's this film which is set in 1940. So, so the 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 shared interests. Um, that's a that's a good thing. Um, yeah, I mean. Definitely, I think for both of them, you've got 
the mental, mental <coughs> health in general and the well-being there is definitely from it and from community and the fitness side and for physically as well is is definitely there because it keeps people in that kind of in that field and i think it's potentially because of how you're you're able to let go and that may be coming from the fact that you're in a community because i think sometimes when you're at a gym say and you're mm. working out for a lot of people who are especially for introverted people um they're gonna um, just assume because it's how their brain is working everyone is watching how i work out everyone yeah. thinks i'm doing this wrong things like that. whereas i can imagine i would imagine in terms of um dance i don't know so much about martial arts i actually I'm trying to think, and I don't know about martial arts because it's more, it's more with two people at, at certain areas. So it's, yeah. not, it's not as much. But I would imagine in dance, you're far more free. You don't really, you're not looking around the room as, assuming that everyone's dancing because you're just fucking dancing. You, you, you do, uh, the, 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 peop, the new dancers always get intimidated if there's a really great dancer. Uh, if there's a teacher, this, that and the other. And I'm always saying, uh, they... I know my abilities. I've won this, that, and the other. So I know I'm not being egotistical. I know my level. I'm a good dancer. I've done well. Yeah. I am so egotistical on the dance floor. It's look at me, me, me. I'm not going to look at anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so full of shit. Um, don't worry. You carry on and dance what you like. Yeah. I'm never going to judge you. In fact, I love dancing with beginners because they've still got that, wow, this is great look on their face and they've got smiles and they're really happy. They're wonderful to dance with because they still... You get a bit jaded after a while when you do anything. Um, so, yeah. and I suppose actually, you know that, there's probably a there's probably a link there as well that they might do something as they might do in self defence. No, I haven't really come across it yet, but it's possible they might do something that you would have never thought of, and you kind of go, "Oh, oh, I can steal yes. that. That works." When, I'm all, I'm doing that with dancing all the time. They've made a mistake, or they've done it. It's no, there's no mistakes. They've done something different. I thought, oh, I'm thinking that. That's going in a class later. No one's going to know it come from that. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so no, that's half the fun as well. People who are new to something can bring a lot of stuff with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's... Things evolve because of new blood, etc. If you don't get new people, forget it. That's it. It's died. Yeah, you you need to make new people welcome. You you need to make sure they know it's fun. Um, I mean, a big part of the mental health and physical health is just the fact that they're having fun. And if you're having fun, you're going to do it again. If you're doing something, an exercise you really don't like, no, they must. Oh, this is a great way to lose weight. This is a great way to get upper body strength. This is a great way to do core. If you're not going to enjoy it, you're just not going to do it. Yeah, I mean. It's one of those things. It's like when people say about losing weight, you never really lose weight until you want to lose weight because it's it's that enjoyment yeah. or it's that need or and yeah, that's definitely going to come along. And I think that's that's definitely um, in terms of of self defense and martial arts as well. It's it's when you're you're enjoying it. You know, if you're not enjoying it, it's not going to be a reward in any way, whether physical or mental, because no. your brain's telling you what the fuck am I doing this for? Um, whereas. Yeah. If you're enjoying it and you're thinking, oh, yeah, okay, well, I can muck about with this, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're rewarding yourself. You're, it actually becomes, it's, it's a weird thing, it becomes a treat. And I actually remember, I think in, in, when I say diet, because I think of back when I um, lost, you know, quite a few stone a few years ago, um, I had uh, my reward meal. So this is going to sound really weird for anybody dieting now. Do not fucking take this. This was back when I'd done no nutritional stuff or anything. Um, my reward meal for midweek was uh, mashed swede with no butter, just swede boiled and mashed, and two corn sausages with nothing else. No seasoning, <laughs> nothing. But I convinced, I, because I was kind of enjoying the way I was doing stuff, and I actually enjoyed those ingredients separately, that, that was such a treat. Oh, it's my treat yeah. meal tonight. It's Wednesday. I can get I can get veggie sausage yeah. and uh, mashed sweet. And people are like, what the fuck is the matter with you? But again, if you look at it saying dance, it's like Morris dancers. Everyone else looking at them going, what the fuck are you doing? They're just going, I love it. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's that thing. Never, you know? worry, yeah. Never worry about, if you like it, then you're fucking cool. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you're doing. But yeah. Yeah. That, that's, uh, I won't... As a teacher, I mean, I, I, want to, I don't want to bring out people who are going to win competitions. I want to teach people to have fun. 
when when you've int- the amount of people who now know each other and they're now friends i mean that's why i think they're very upset at the moment with the the covid 19 is the fact that of course they're not seeing their friends not hanging out yeah the dancing they miss but it's that every week it's like oh we're we, we having a chat about this and they got a recipe for that and someone's you know the, I, I find out how their dog is blah 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 um that yeah people are missing um, yeah it's i think that yeah covid 19 in terms of both of these i think has had an effect generally and obviously you can do this stuff at home as we say but there is there is definitely an impact and it's potentially something that both of us will have to think about how to try and alleviate in some way in case whether there's a second wave there's something else in the future whatever it is well uh, i i you know i saw two things they're saying that there seems to be another Another flu which has appeared and bubonic plague. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Like, I love, you've got to love that the first, this, this next thing off they talked about bubonic plague was, but we don't think it'll be a pandemic. It's like the fact that it's even a mention in your fucking minds. It's like, yeah, thank you. I loved it because you, you kind of go, um, and bubonic plague was found today in Inner Mongolia. I'm sorry, what the <laughs> fuck? What? What? <laughs> well, of course, it's treatable now. Yes, bubonic, oddly enough, something well, like that isn't the, the same sort of threat. As long as it's bubonic plague. And not pneumonic. Yes, because that one yeah. is like that nothing's changed, basically. You just have to be yeah. part of the yeah. So as long as it's bubonic, we can deal with that now. We have the we yeah. have the medicine. As long as yeah. that doesn't so, mix with COVID nineteen or something, fucking hell. Um, yeah, and we, <laughs> what was it else was it this year with the, the, the murder hornets and uh, oh, what the, else was it something to do with crocodiles? It's just yes. like Come on, you're just having a laugh now. You've Come got to get on TikTok. The amount of... St- I don't know if you've got on it at all, but there's so many skits with um, someone playing God um, as a character or they're playing Mother Earth as a character. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and then there's people just taking the piss and they're just going, do you think the murder horn has just got there and just thought, I think reading the room, guys, we should fuck off. Um, <laughs> there's, there's one guy who does, a, who does a skit. Basically, he's talking to himself and it's, um, you know him explain you know he's come back from he's playing himself coming back from holiday with a you know in january and uh he does it like every month and he's coming just kind of going oh happy new year's like wait and then he's like the first bit of the year it's like explaining about australia and things like that and he's going yeah i'm gonna go back into hobby nation and then every month it's like well it couldn't have got any worse yeah, oh, yeah. really wow <laughs> well yes it's just it's, um, yeah it is it yeah is, how um, we do yeah, how we deal with it, like you were saying, I mean, uh, when I do start again, because I have high blood pressure and I have high cholesterol, I don't want to, you yes. know, threaten. I, um, and also, the very thought of going back too early and teaching someone and they're ill, no, I don't want to have that. So what I will probably do when I go back, it will be teaching so, um, solo dances first, making sure we're at a distance. Yes. Um, Julie's been doing some good ones on on online until she hurt hurt her arm so she hasn't been able to do any um so i think people will be dancing solo more uh but yeah yeah, partner dancing i do miss because there is a different feel to it they again you're you're being intimate in a different sort of way a harmless sort of way as well In, in like i say in the 30s people were a lot closer and it was only dance so it didn't matter and the other thing as well, if you went out in the 30s or 40s and you only danced with your other half, that was a no-no. That was like, no, you, you might have a, a dance at the end of the evening, but you go out to socialise. That was the whole point. It was a healthy thing then as well. In the fact, right, we're going down dancing, we're going to find our friends. So it was, actually, the social thing was to mix. Um, so it is difficult because people who go dancing are people who socialize the reason they've gone so uh, what's happening now is awful for some of my friends me less so because i it's a job uh yeah. so in some way i could divorce it a little bit i miss my dancing but not the same as i was saying about people who, who no longer catching up so hopefully yeah it's, bit bit, um, it's interesting i mean i'm 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 a bit different is is work but it's also you know interaction for me and i know a lot of them are friends with some of the students as well yeah. um and again, we have a lot of people because it's self defense and well being. We have a lot of people who don't who do come to socialize. You know, we have we have people yeah. that are just there because they know after class, I'm gonna almost definitely say, "All right, guys, let's go to the pub. pub." You know, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and it's yeah, it is it is weird. I mean, it's very hard for me 
in terms of because you don't really have catters in self-defense we've got footwork so we've got some stuff yeah it's gonna be very hard to try and separate it out um and of course it's you know you've got to be careful about people's well-being as well as their you know their general health is part of their well-being so yeah and obviously i have the i have potentially the opposite um worry to yourself so when i'm out and about um when i'm just walking out and about normally i don't tend to wear my mask but when i'm on uh you know when i'm in shopping uh you know in asda or if i'm in on, on a bus or things like that i've got like one of those full-on ventilator filtered yeah i've got one of those jobbies yeah um and i've always got um alcohol gel with me so i've you know i'm, I'm always making sure because i'm on the other end where i don't have any conditions like that and i'm far more likely to be someone that's asymptomatic and yes so yeah um, out and about when you're out in the open air it's not as bad we've been told this over and over again it's not uh, so yeah, bad I, I, when i'm when i'm on a bus or i'm okay you have to now but i've still seen people not or when i'm in asda or when i'm wherever it is you know put the mask on because we're, we're, we're close quarters and i mean the worst one for me was um it was home bargains who did everything they could to try and keep people at a decent distance and then you have someone who's about 80 standing right behind you and i'm there thinking this is for you yeah this this isn't uh, for me like oddly enough what we said earlier community if people yeah. aren't thinking community they're thinking well i'm gonna be fine yeah. or whatever it's it's that yeah community yeah it's actually that difference between eastern and western thinking because eastern yeah. uh, western thinking is far more kind of um you know near near liberal so it's the individual whereas eastern thinking yeah. is it's the community comes first. And so yeah. Japanese and Chinese is what people can never understand. They wear a mask because you always get people that go, oh, they're wearing a mask because they don't want to get ill. They think we're dirty. No, they're not. They're wearing a mask because they're ill and they don't want to make you ill. Because, yeah. and, but it's um, incredibly oh, hard to try and describe that. You have the same thing in Africa as well. Ubuntu, mm. Ubuntu I think the word is, or something. Community again, and yeah, South America. Ubuntu, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's community. I, I know that because of compute, because of computing, because I yes, used to use exactly. Linux Ubuntu. Yeah, I, I didn't realise that until. <laughs> oh, is that where that came from? Okay, um, but again, it, it's you're thinking about others. This whole neoliberal, me, me, me. That I, I saw Anne Rin, the Anne Rand. Oh, I can't pronounce Anne it. Rand. Anne Rand. Yeah. <laughs> Her, her organization, um, or the, the Anne Rand Memorial, I don't know what it was, they actually got money from the, the state to, for support in America. And you're thinking, surely that's like the exact opposite of what you say. It's, it's <laughs> like, how, how you've got money? Isn't that meant to be me, me, me? Why are you, uh, whatever. They are rent off, rent off. Rent yeah. Each other. <laughs> I, mean, I mean community community is in in the martial arts community is definitely there in dancing it's clearly there. i mean like i say if oh, we go back sorry. to that the very first dance i think you spoke about which is also martial art which is capoeira which literally was community the whole point of it was community to create a community to keep a culture in community so i think i think if we kind of wrap, wrap it up there it might, it, i think the main thing that we've said is well firstly Self-defense, martial arts, um, normal uh, dance in its many, many forms um, and everything else definitely helps with your well-being in some way. Whether it is physical, oh, whether it is mental or whether it's both. You might get both. You might just get one. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's going to be helping you in some way. And actually the underlying of that, again, for both physical and mental, the underlying bit is the fact that they bring a community. They bring together a community. So, yeah. Um, I mean, especially to anyone watching this that is from the society, check up on each other for a start uh, during this time. Yeah. Check up on each other because the community that, is what keeps us going. You know, That's what's been nice is the people who I've taught, they've checked up on each other. I mean, yeah. one lady, she knows I'm not working and she knows some of the others are top this and the other. She said, because she works for the rail, she's just like, I'm down. Uh, I'm, I'm, where, can you come down to Folkestone Central tomorrow? Get down there. Big box load of food. It's just like, wow. You know, I'm, I mean, I mean, I mean, I was in tears. I, I, um, and you're getting people like that. Now, that's community support um, from doing classes. It's, it's, yeah, don't take it for granted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean. And, and, and if you need help, don't ever feel 
ashamed to ask. No, no, not um, at all. Actually, that never. brings me on to something that um, specifically, if you're, um, this goes out to st students in general, but if you're anything to do with the society, this was set up a couple of years ago, specifically um, through the student union that we can use if we have the money there, if we have the money there, and you cannot feed yourself, you're having massive issues because of COVID-19, whatever it is, we will buy you some food. That was just set yeah. up a while ago. So if you're watching this, you're part of the society. Um, I'd love to do it for everyone, but of course we only have a specific amount of money, um, but we want to you know, help out as much as we can. Uh, we have checked it with the student union. It's something that was done. We can do this. We will buy you. It's not going to be, you know, goat's cheese and all that but it's going to be uh, you know healthy stuff um we will be able to fight buy you some food or, or or things like that so do come to us we're, we're there as a community we're there to help you know it's self-defense and well-being which is you know why we're doing talks like this with <coughs> people like can andrew I, as well so can i just say to uh, adam as well that if anyone wants to know more about dance any sort of dance they're more than happy to contact me. Yep. Yes, I want you to come to my classes and I want to make money. But also, I want to encourage people to dance and have fun. And I know so many dance teachers in Canterbury who do different stuff. So Latin, ballroom, tango, a little bit of street, uh, belly dancing, um, this, that and the other. If you're interested in something, I'm more than happy to put you in contact with the, with the right people. And also, I do have a Facebook group Dance Canterbury Dance, where I... I'm, the, I'm uh, putting it in the description below. Ah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you doing? Um, dance yeah. Canterbury Dance, it's, it's a, uh, basically the teachers have put their stuff on there, they'll advertise. We're not advertising much, but there's a few people doing um, some online classes if you want to do it, and some of them are free. Um, dance is great for you, it's great fun, so if you want to, just contact me and I will try my best to put you in the right direction. If it's not swing dance, I know loads of others. And I'm more than happy. Uh, I've helped Adam before with doing classes um, uh, on his behalf. And I'm more than happy to get involved. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, guys, uh, like I say, in the description below, uh, I will double check with Andrew to make sure I get the right Facebook page. Um, and we'll put it in the description below. And the one for the society is going to be there as well. But, yes, yeah, so you'll be able to click on that. That will be posted to our... Uh, on YouTube there. And it should also, I think I've got enough characters, be, I'll probably put it on Tony URL, but it'll be on our Twitter and um, everything else as well. So if you want uh, to find out more about that, you're interested in the dance, um, you know, and you want to do the, the self-defense uh, self or your self-defense, you want to do the dance either way around or just want to do both or just whatever, um, please do check them out and uh, go from there. Uh, like Andrew said, he's helped out before with um, helping people in, in terms of uh, mental health and stuff through dance. So it's definitely worthwhile. That's why Andrew's part of this discussion. And um, so, yeah, basically get involved and help each other out, stay the community. And um, yeah, until next time, guys, thank you very much to Andrew for joining me. Thank and, you for asking me. Uh, no problem. And it's been a pleasure. Uh, the only thing is oh. I'm hoping that people stayed to the end. <laughs> yes, please. Down. If there's anybody, if any of you stayed to the end, just say hi. Just say hi, guys. Just, just you, let us know. Um, but yeah, we'll see you next time. And um, yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, everyone.